Well, David, obviously, I appreciate you for coming on. Obviously, the big news has obviously been with your son. Just talk about the biggest factor in Austin flipping his commitment from Florida to Ole Miss. Well, the biggest factor was um, we just thought it was a better fit for us in our situation. Um, we like we really, we really, you know, have a lot of respect for Coach Kiffin, um, and uh, we thought you know we fit better in that system. That's part of it, and the baseball was so much in part involved in it too. Um, we like the situation, the baseball program, and um, availability for him there. And so we thought it was a great fit. So the decision from Florida to Mississippi, how did that come about? Like I said, the same thing. We um, we was this. It was really a last minute decision. It wasn't like a situation where it was lingering long. We was we was really interested in going to Florida. Um, we liked the situation at Florida. I thought that the people of Florida was really great. Um, and, you know, like I say, it's home, you know, and we thought that we'll be doing a good job at, um, you know, being there. Um, but just some things that happened on, we took the visit to Ole Miss. We liked the direction of the program at the time. Uh, we liked the quarterback room. Um, you know, it's a very tough quarterback room. Um, he's up to the challenge for that. And then, um, yeah, like I say, I thought the, the schematic stuff that he was doing, be able to do with it and, and where he, he would be, um, you know, it, um, it worked out better for him at the time. You mentioned Lane Kiffin. So what is Austin's relationship with Lane Kiffin? Obviously, he's known as one of the best recruiters in college football. Well, he's a great recruiter, but it really was about he's been a great coach. Like, like, like we like, we like, you know, what he was talking about when, when it comes to the, the whole quarterback position. I yeah. thought that, like I said before, the, the school was going to go to had a real guy. I liked the scheme. I thought it was good, but I want uh, the guys. Um, what he was talking from the quarterback perspective, you know, the guy coached for the Heisman Trophy once, that quarterback. Yes. Um, you know, and my kids are very cerebral kid. You know, just playing like going to play junk yard football is not really him. Um, so the more he could do. Um, and, you know, we talk about the stuff that he, they did with Tua, that he did with Alabama, the stuff he did with Carson Palmer. That's more my, you know, my kid into that type of more, I fit more fit for him. I thought it was a better fit. So. Oh, Paul Simmons, I'm yes, glad sir. you brought up Tua. I remember back at Pahokee, I had a lot of people telling me that they reminded Austin Simmons of Tua. What are yes. those comparisons? Well, yeah, I mean, I think that the anticipation is just like tours. I think Austin got a, but honestly, you know, at the same age, I definitely think Austin got a stronger arm. I think Austin is a bigger people. People don't think, don't realize how big Austin really is. It's not small. So to get up on it, you realize that how big it is. People think he's like a big skinny kid. Austin's about 200 pounds. So he's, he's you know, Austin's close to 6'4", 200 pounds. So it's not small. And like I said, he grew a lot, you know, when he was at Pahogi. You know, he grew. Remember, remember he, he was a young kid playing varsity. So... You know, you saw, you know, people like Dan. He was starting at Varsity in seventh grade. So, this really, that's the second year at Pahokee was like on his fourth season and playing Varsity, like actually playing in games. Really, the fifth season, he, he actually um, dressed in four Varsity games in sixth grade. So, so, you know, so like for that point of view, he's kind of ahead of the curve um, as well. So, that's the. Um, you know, we worked out with Tua a couple of times. Tua's a real good dude, real good mentor type guy. And he just worked out so hard. I also worked with so many grown men. Yeah. So the speed of the game for high school was really slow for him. And I think it kind of hurts him in high school, to be honest with you. You know, the 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 timing is kind of off for him for high school kids. He's more he's better like with older kids. You mentioned college baseball is a big factor of him going to Ole Miss. So obviously he plans on playing college baseball. How do you think he could you know, manage playing both football and baseball in college? Well, I think it's easy. I mean, he's been doing his whole life. I think um, the good part about it is he's, he's going into his major. So what I mean by that is he'll be a junior when he enrolls on campus. So he's in his major. Um, and baseball, uh, old Miss price is a different time than football. And most likely also probably want to be a pitcher only. Yeah. Um, they, they might say let him hit. He can hit. I think me as a dad, I read him just be a pitcher. Now that's up to my kid. He still got you know got to do what he want to do as well. But I think it's easier to be a quarterback and just a pitcher because you got a routine as a throw as a pitcher. You got your timing. Coach can know when you're gonna pitch. Hey, yeah. you gonna pitch? Uh, hey, Austin, y'all, y'all have practice at football Wednesday and spring practice. Okay, Austin, we gonna need you to pitch on th- on Friday, or we might need you to pitch on Sunday. 
it's only two weeks of they kind of overlap for spring anyway. And so about a pitcher, but if you're, if you're a starting guy, a position guy, you got to beat all the time. You got to do infield outfield. You got to hit all the time. Pitcher, he could actually work with the coach, the pitching coach, 10 o'clock at night if he need to. Yeah. Instead of his routine and going home by his business. So I think being a pitcher is much easier for him. We've been doing it, we've been doing it so long, so yeah. it's not, it won't be nothing new for him. Definitely. And now let's go back to high school. I got a chance to see Austin pitch for True North. Atlanta, Florida, against Trinity Christian Academy. That was a playoff. Yep. That was a big, big win for True North. For right. Starting. I want you right. to talk about what you saw from him in that game, how that could translate to college. Well, like I said, um, he has some. He has some good talent, um, and he's a, he's competitive. So he wants to pitch against the big teams. Uh, compared to, you know, he has a tendency not to pitch. We never pitched him at True North against teams that were supposed to be lackluster teams. He only pitched against state-ranked teams. I think that kind of hurts the ERA a little bit. Those guys can play. I mean, we, every, every team we play, we got a guy supposed to go to a Power 5 baseball school or get drafted. So, But, you know, he played well against them. Uh, True North was a, it was a great team. We got a great baseball coach. Had a great understanding of what we were trying to get accomplished. And um, they had a good middle school program for my younger son to be a part of. It's a great fit. You know, and um, and it's close to you know close to his house, his mom's house when he's down south. So it, was, it, it worked out really good. Obviously, you have to make the decision between Florida and Ole Miss. But talk about the decision between oh, does Austin want to play high school football next season, or does he want to go to college? I mean, the football part, he kind of wanted to go to college more than I did at first. Yes, you. He thought that, um, you know, he thought that. The game was kind of slow for him. Once the once the whole situation went with Pahokee, um, you know he doesn't have Gilmore and them guys anymore. So uh, Tony Martin's already went enrolled in college already. We had some Pahokee had some good kids, man. Uh, like I said, they Pahokee, the receivers, they worked hard. Even though a lot of guys were DB guys first, they they did what we asked them to do. Um, it was a culture shock to me at Pahokee for him, uh, for a lot of the kids because what we did at Pahokee. They wasn't. They never really did that before. Like we really ran like an NFL style offense, you know. And 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 those kids, they accepted them. Um, he was a different type of kid. You know, originally we were not originally from Pahokee, so um, it, it worked out really well for everybody. We were, unfortunately we didn't win a state championship, which we should have won. Um, and um, but we didn't do that. But once that situation, then we got over to Moorhaven. We didn't have the same skill guys. They were at Pahokee, but before he even left Pahokee, he was thinking about, you know, the option to go. And uh, we had an opportunity for another college to go in uh, January, and then that, that fell through. So we was, we was in the process of going around, and then the whole thing about 23 came. It, it just, 23 was on the table for a minute, but I really thought it was going to be 24, not 25. But once he, guys, once he gets his AA degree, it's like, what is he going to do? He can't really take no class. going to take a basketball yeah. class. Like, and then he's always a risk of injuries. There's a lot of stuff that could happen, you know. They out of concern, out of control. You know, he could be doing anything. He could, the guy could miss the block and somebody hit him. He could hit his knee. He could twist his knee. He could be playing baseball and get hurt. You know, you know. We looked at the pros and the cons of it, and then we decided to go that direction. That's awesome. So now well, let's go into rivalry game because at Ole Miss you have the egg ball. Right. Hey. And Austin had good already participating in a rivalry on two and zero in the Mutt Bowl against Blaze Central. Both blowouts. Who best for Hokey wins ever in the program illustrious? Let's talk about how the Mutt Bowl can prepare him for a back. Well, I think it'd be fine. I mean, like you know, um, the th- one thing I didn't say about Pahokee, Pahokee's a very tough, tough, tough crowd. <laughs> you got a thick skin to be a oak. We can win it. We could, he could throw four touchdowns. The fans still could be mad at Polk. So, so they they they, they are a tough crowd. I think it, it give you um it give you a lot of moxie, a lot of um you know it gets you um it makes them very responsible. Ain't got know what to say on social media, kind of with Polk. <laughs> can they say some things to you? Um, I think he learned how to deflect a lot of stuff at Polk. So. Like you said, like the, the Mutt Bowl alone, that's the back and forth between Glade Central and Pahokee, uh, between the social media and the fans. That it, it, 
it's, it's crazy. It's like you will never think this. Like this is how they spoke about kids. It's not about kids in the mud bowl. It's about the families and the, and the community. <laughs> I'm like, oh goodness, they really, really ticked off about this mud bowl. So, but the air bowl, like I say, is a big robbery. You know, I think they, I think um, I recall. I think they said also the Auburn game is gonna be a big game too um, for um, this year, Ole Miss. And then of course Alabama. You know, uh, Kiffin was at Alabama. We got have three or four big games at uh, Ole Miss. Um, he'll be fine. Um, he'll be fine with that stuff. He'll be he'll do well. I think I do. Re- I think I'll do really well. To be honest with you, really well. Definitely. Yeah, David. Obviously, the news came out yesterday. Big news, and obviously, a ton of people probably in Austin's DMs. A ton of people in the comments. How was Austin feeling? Did he put his phone aside, or was he like? just involved in all of the social media stuff well he kind of ignores it to be honest with you, he kind of puts it on do not disturb most of the time <laughs> anyway kind of like i do um but not like i said the whole thing of being at pahokee i think kind of get used to people sending stuff that that go with the territory you're a quarterback you know you know quarterback get blamed for everything you know quarterback uh, we had uh, we uh we beat palm Beach central this year i think also people like 80 yards they might also want the Palm Beach Central. I might be he don't throw 80 yards. All he did was control the offense and make sure we do nothing stupid. Now he audible to all the good running plays, but we, I, you know, I chose to run the ball because they, they gave us the run. So, um, so but then we also play, you know, another team. He'll throw 400 yards, and you know, he'll get gratitude for that. That's just the quarterback position. You know, Hawthorne game threw 340 some yards, but he'll get the blame for that. That's just how. That's the position of the quarterback. That's why you know. You know, I thought, hell, we gave up 90 yards of offense against on defense, and we lost that game against Hawthorne. So that's tough, you know. That's tough. Okay. So let's talk about the Port Haven spring. You were telling me off camera that the touchdown run and the point conversion, you said it was based off of audible. Let's yeah, he audible that stuff. Like, you know, he, you know, he, uh, he has a lot. Like I say, that's another reason he likes – he likes – um where we going to college at, they got a lot of exits for him. He used to, that's what we had, a lot of exits. Like, you know, a lot of times we don't have to call a lot of, a lot of plays he call on his own based on the, the box we get, based on the coverage we get. Um, and But like I said, he's been in that system for a long time. He's a smart kid. He, kid, he did a lot of film for us at Pahokee, uh, at Moorhaven. Um, so, you know, he he ran the show. Uh, he ran the show for us at, um, for us, so get us out of bad, a lot of bad. Cause even co- all coaches call bad calls. It's no perfect game for a coach calling. So you gotta have a quarterback to understand what we're gonna get done, and uh, go from there. Obviously, because you're Austin's dad, you you definitely had a big part of him having a 5.34 GPA. How did he manage being so smart while practicing daily on the football field? Well, um. <laughs> we on TV, but it was you gotta you had, you had to do some things old school a little bit. <laughs> so, I mean, but on the real though, like it started at a young age. We had it, he had to read two hours a day when he was a kid, five six five six years old. He had to do that type of stuff, or he couldn't he couldn't get to the video game. You know, his video game time probably as a kid his age probably less than a five year old. You know what I'm saying? So he never was really interested in it. Now we wanted him to do more things. But, but you um he uh, was a situation where he had a routine. It was always routines, 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 routines. Get up in the morning. It's like it's like get up in the morning, make your bed up, brush your teeth. That started from that. Okay, now this kid has read a book. Okay, now let's go make um go clean up behind yourself. You know what? I don't care. Go wash that car. But it's not, it's not dirty. I don't care. Wash it anyway. It's little things like that. Okay. Yeah. Oh you um oh you got a B in the class. You told me you got an A. Okay. Well we are gonna run you a hundred. You don't get 16 one tens for a B. Like he he got in trouble for a B. Like, I mean, I'm like, you don't got a job, so what else you gonna do? But get an A. Then of course, then the college work was he you no, know, it wasn't easy. The college work wasn't easy, man. Because like it's real college work. It's not like an AP course. You have to go to class the whole four or five months, like a fit, he'll take a 15 credits a semester in high school. He's a full-time student. So I think people think he's He's going to be – no, Austin's going to have an AA degree. Austin's a junior in college right now, academic. 
So that's the situation. So he, it's a lot of structure, a lot of structure. And then if I'm not there, it's a lot of, I hate texting, he'll do it. You got to have a kid that do it too. Hey, son, I need you to do this. I need you to go outside, go in the backyard. I need you to do uh, 20 minutes of jump rope. I need you to do this. Band work for baseball. I need you to swing the bats with the team on yourself. If you don't do it yourself, you can't play. If, if your dad or your, uh, your coach or you got to make you do it, you're not a player. You're just participating. That's different. Coach Simmons, one thing that endears all people to Austin is his character, especially off the field. I've never seen Austin be respectful to anybody. He's always like a yes, sir, yes, ma'am, sir. Right. Let's talk about his upbringing and how that played a role to be him. Well, I guess it's back to the same thing we talked about. You know, we had routines. You won't, you won't get punished. You know, no kid comes out the womb perfect. Like, it's just like being, no kid come out of the room don't like the certain type of people, right? That Those are learned traits. So a lot of the traits that he has is a learned and taught trait. You know, you got to tell your kid, I'm he, I'm his father. We raised, I'm not his friend. Does that make sense? Yes. Now, I, will, I love him to be my friend. I think we got a real good relationship. But it's a time I got to say, I'm the dad, you're the kid. And then, you know, we adjust from there. And then that's what he always did. He always had always had rules. If he didn't have the rules, he wouldn't be the guy he is. If we just let him come out and just do his own thing, he would be disrespectful. He won't have a 5.34 GPA. You know, that's just what it is. I mean, you know, don't, the kid, this kid didn't come here on his own. I had something to do with it. So I might as well raise him correctly, at least my way. Because I thought my way was the correct way to do it. And um, I got the right kid for it. He has the mental aptitude to do it, but and the physical ability. But yeah, that was the main reason with him. He, he was pretty good, and, but we was really strict with him too. It was strict. It was, we were pretty strict on him. Yep. Let's also do this. We talked a lot about Austin. I would like for you to introduce us to his younger brother. Well, Kenneth, Kenneth Simmons is going to the eighth grade. He started later in Austin. So COVID really slowed him down. Austin have a COVID. So so we've been watching Austin. And and the family think that it was more about Austin than Kenneth. But really, when it came down to it, Kenneth was getting more more love than Austin was. It's just that Austin really was the guinea pig, if I could say it. That makes sense? Uh, yeah. Certain things we were doing. Kenneth's going, he's in eighth grade, going to the eighth grade, but academic, he's in 10th grade. Okay. Um. I think Kenneth naturally is probably more book smart than Austin. That don't mean he got a 5.3 GPA, but what I'm saying is I think Kenneth gets it faster. Um, uh, I don't know if he's going to be as tall as Austin, but I see him being about 6'1", 6'2". Um, and he throw the ball. He throw the ball. He's really strong. He's learned how to play a quarterback. He was more of a baseball player first. He was more of a hitter, baseball player. Nice to twist him over more of the quarterback position. So he played more baseball than Austin did. But it's gonna, I think it's going to be pretty good. Um, I think he's a kid that could get drafted in baseball out of high school. And uh, we'll see how good a quarterback he'll be. I think he'll be a good quarterback as well. He's doing the work. Um, I think he'll be – he's about a year away to be like a full-time starter in Boston probably. Though. That's my opinion. Do you think we'll get Austin for a few minutes or – Maybe uh, you want to you want to get them. Let me try to get them for five minutes. Hold on. Like, I get them for, they're doing a they're doing the OTA. So long. Hey hey hey! I need a break. Get a break. Austin, come here. Hey, I need like two minutes, coach. I need two minutes. Hello. Hello. I need two minutes. Two minutes. Hey, on Austin. Hey, what's up? Congratulations. Appreciate it. Yes, sir. So we have Isaac Edelman. He would like to ask you a couple of questions. Austin, man, thanks so much for coming on. I just have a just one question for you, my man. Obviously, big news, reclassing from class of 2025 to class of 2023. What are you most excited about for college football and your tenure with Lane Kiffin? So just by getting, like, you know, developed early. At such a young age, you know, so um, going to college early has its benefits, you know, get to learn the offense better. Like compared to the 2024s, they don't have the opportunity I'm getting right now. 
I'm already in the playbook, getting bigger, getting stronger at such a high level. So it has its perks to it. So that's what I'm really most excited about. I'm a big baseball guy, so I'm really excited that you're also playing college baseball. Just talk about being able to do both in college. Just playing both. It's always been a dream of mine since I was a little kid. Like, I always wanted like, to have the opportunity to play baseball, football at a D1 college, you know. I th- like I didn't expect it to be Ole Miss, though, because, you know, Ole Miss was never, like, you know, in my, like, vision to play any sports over there. But, like, shoot, shoot. if God wants me to play over there, I'll play over there. How does it feel being the most popular high school football player in America on Saturday when you made that decision to go with Ole Miss? So, like, it's a blessing, you know? So, like, getting noticed by, like, this many people to do something that's never been heard of before, like, you know, it's one of those things you're really, you know, appreciative for, you know? Like, I thank my dad for that. He gave me this opportunity to even make this possible. So, like, it's really just a big blessing. Austin, Austin, when you look back at your high school football career, because obviously you're done with high school football, just what's your biggest takeaway? I think my biggest takeaway is, like, becoming, like, in my opinion, one of the most pronounced quarterbacks ever, like, play at hockey. Like, you know, to, like, to actually win back-to-back mud bowls, go deep in the playoffs, back-to-back seasons. Like, it's one of those things that I find my career at hockey remarkable, you know. Something, like, something people will remember, like, for years to come. Let's talk about you breaking Anquan Bolden's passing record while mm-hmm. at Bohol. Let's go into that, how you felt about it, and what the enduring legacy will be. Honestly, like, I didn't even know I broke that record till like, after, I think, a month after um, we lost in the playoffs. Shoot, like, breaking it. And, like, you know, I've met Anquan Bolden before in this, um, last summer when he was on um, work like, you know, one of the coaches at XPE when I was throwing with NFL receivers. So, like, just – it's just one of those things that I'm grateful for, you know. And, like, shoot, it was actually unexpected when I actually threw, like, that many yards after that game. So, like, it's one of those things I'm grateful for. And what game are we talking about? After the Hawthorne game, I threw, like, 300 yards. And, like, that's the game that really made me break that record. Because, like, shoot – Honestly, I thought, like, only through, like, maybe close to, like, 275. I didn't think it was 300 till like, after, like, you know, that big game with Harley in the um, fourth quarter. But, shoot, just one of those things I'm grateful for. Austin, my final question for you. For the people that don't know who Austin Simmons is, tell them who is Austin Simmons. Shoot, Austin Simmons is one of those playmakers that's really going to get himself out there, you know, always going to be um, a leader, great role model for the whole team. And – I'm always going to be there to make some plays whenever you need me to. And also, we're going to wrap this up. In high school, your nickname at Pahokee was Tua. Yeah. So we can talk. Let's talk about that comparison and how you can become the first Austin Simmons instead of the next Tua. Hmm. Honestly, like the comparison between us, like between me and Tua, I think like people look at it because, you know, I'm lefty, kind of like have some visual similarities, like, you know, comparing our faces to each other and like shoot just having that touch and accuracy that's like you know that's really not found in any lefties really so like just comparing us like the two of us like just like that like I think I can stand out more as a deep threat and maybe more as a you know running threat but you know who knows I just can't wait to like see like what know what my talents really bring to the SEC where you see how I stand up as Austin Simmons. Austin, thank you so much for taking the time out to speak with us. Mm-hmm. Good luck at all this. Thank you. Appreciate you. Thank you, Austin. You're the man. Thank you. You're welcome.